Happy Sabbath. It is wonderful to be here in Jamaica after 25 years. Uh, my first time back. Amen. Amen. I thank, uh, I want to thank Pastor Brown, uh, Pastor Johnson, and all of those who have worked to make this uh, possible. It is uh, a privilege and an honor to stand before you uh, today. And what I have to share with you today, I, I hope will challenge you and will make a difference in your Christian walk. Let me just mention that we have two additional meetings uh, today, and I encourage you to come to those meetings, please. Uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about uh, a subject that I've entitled, Escape from the Black Hole. Escape from the Black Hole. And let me just forewarn you that I'm a very interactive speaker. So I like to ask questions, and I like to ask you to raise your hand sometimes to, to those questions, and I'd like to see you respond by raising your hands. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us go ahead and uh, have a word of prayer, and we will get right into our subject this morning. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your love towards us. Father, right now, <clears throat> we are in need of your Holy Spirit. We are in need of your power. We are in need of your grace. Lord, we are in need of broken hearts that we may hear your word. Father, we pray for all that will happen today, Lord, even for the cameras, the television crew that is here. Father, we pray for every soul that is here. Father, there is someone here today who has come not realizing what will happen today. Heavenly Father, angels are taking their places, both good and evil, because, Lord, there will be a war here this morning, a war in the hearts of many. Please, Lord, may we be victorious. May your, may your angels be victorious, we pray. And Father, last I ask that you would hide me behind your cross. May these words be your words. And Father, bring to life these words. For without your spirit, they are nothing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to do something that I've been doing since I've been here in Jamaica, uh, in particular with this message. I'm going to share with you my testimony up front because I would really like to get into the meat of our study this morning. I was born here on the island of Jamaica. I left when I was five years old. I have three brothers. We were not brought up Adventist. I had not heard the, heard the word Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist, until about 10 years ago. Never heard the word. When we came to New York City, we, we moved to New York City, and there we were introduced to something called the hip-hop culture. How many of you know what that is? Okay, rap music. The hip-hop culture. And my younger brother and I, in particular, uh, just absorbed this culture. We got into break dancing and rhyming and all these different things and began to dress 
and the fashions uh, of the hip hop culture and all these different things. And by the time we we got to college, we were so involved in this industry, we had formed a four man hip hop group. And really, instead of paying attention in school and the things that you're supposed to do when you're paying tuition for college, we were focused on becoming rich and famous. And in 1993, that took place. We signed a major recording contract with EMI Records. How many of you have ever heard of EMI Records? <clears throat> it was an eight album contract ranging somewhere from about seven hundred to eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars US. And we believed that we had had it made and so we dropped out of college and as we dropped out of college about twenty to thirty of our friends dropped out with us. How many people in the group? Four. <laughs> we decided that we were going to live the lifestyle that we saw on TV. And uh, that we did. We went to New York City and we uh, got ourselves a house there. And we began to uh, just party like we had seen all the stars do. We did nothing all day, stay up late at night. We would be smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol. We all had dreadlocks at that time. If you saw me 10 years ago, red dreadlocks, earrings, pants sagging down, all of it. While we were in the middle of recording our first album, we were introduced by another young man. We were all about 19, 20, 21 at that time. We were introduced by another young man to Seventh Day Adventism. And the things that we began to learn from this young man who really was in the same boat we were because he was, he was not practicing what he knew at the time, but he had a knowledge of God's word. And he began to share with us, and, and that house went from a house full of people staying up late at, late at night drinking uh, alcohol and smoking marijuana and writing music to a house full of young people staying up late at night studying the Word of God and still smoking our marijuana and drinking our alcohol. But God was beginning to work with us. In about two to three months, almost the entire group were baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist church. We were so excited that we decided that we could no longer be a regular hip-hop group. So we decided to take the Three Angels' messages and put it into our music. So there we were, dreadlocks, Appearing on programs like Soul Train, MTV, Rap City, Teen Summit, holding our Bibles in our hands. And we became known as one of the first major hip hop groups to be talking about Jesus Christ. We would be in clubs and we would ask questions like, who wants to know who the man of sin is? And hands would just start going up in the clubs. And in those hands were, you know, alcohol bottles and all that other stuff. But nonetheless, they went up and we would start throwing out literature on stage. We were gung-ho. We were excited to share what it was that we were learning. But then another crossroads because the Lord began to speak to me and my brother about some of the things that we were doing and the Lord began to bring some convictions to us where we came to the place where we said we can no longer do what we thought 
was glorifying God. And so we came to a place where we had to make a decision. We had dropped out of school. We had not made $850,000 contract. And now we were being faced. In fact, let me just say this real quick. My, my, my mom is here. My mother and father, very big on education, warned us not to drop out of school. We pleaded. We begged. We got our managers on the phone with our parents. Said, listen, these guys are going to make it big. They're going to be famous. They're going to be popular. Trust us. They said, you guys get one semester off. Well, we got our record deal. We started paying all, all these programs. And you know what? Our parents were happy. Our children have made it. Now, mind you, none of us were Adventist. When my brother and I became Adventist, my parents thought that we were crazy. When we started putting it into our music, they thought that we were crazy. But then when it came to the place where we said, Mom, Dad, we have become convicted that we can no longer be a part of the entertainment industry. And they said, but you're doing Christian hip hop. And we said, Mom, Dad, we've got to give up this $850,000 contract. They really thought that we were crazy. And you know, I, I thank the Lord that my mother uh, is a baptized Seventh-day Adventist today. My father as well. And so I praise the Lord for the way that he works and he leads. And what I want to share with you this morning are some of the things that the Lord has shared, has shared with me about what I now call the black hole. I want to prepare, prepare you with a question, or rather by a question. How many of you know someone who is struggling with sorcery? So let me see your hands. You know someone who is struggling with sorcery? You know a sorcerer? Nobody. I saw one hand, two, three. Three hands. Three hands, okay. Another question, what would you do if I told you that when you left this building today, you were going to come face to face with a sorcerer? That was going to try to put a spell on you and, you know, cause your fingers and toes to drop off. What would you do? Some of you say, I, I'd do it. I'd stay here at the church, but that doesn't count. If you had to go out and face this sorcerer, what is the first thing you would do? Come on now, Christians. You would pray. How many of you would pray like you'd never prayed before? How many of you would pray like you prayed this morning? When I mention the word sorcery, what is it that comes to mind? Okay, good. Obia, what else? Witchcraft. Right. I've heard all those things. Those are the thoughts that come to mind when I mention the word sorcery. Let me share something with you. If you would open your Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 18 and verse 23. Revelation chapter 18, verse 23. And when you get there, let me hear you say, Amen. Amen. Revelation 18, verse 23. The Bible says there, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. And by the way, the context here, the Bible, John the, John the Revelator is speaking about Babylon in particular. And he says, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy what? Sorceries were, how many? All nations deceived. The Bible says here that all who are deceived, how many is all? That's everybody. Everyone that will be deceived, everyone that will end up lost in the last days will be lost because of their involvement with what? Sorcery. Sorcery. Now that's pretty strange. 
Because when I ask the question, how many of you know someone, I, I didn't mean just anyone in the church, I meant anyone, anyone of your, any, anybody out there in the streets. If you knew someone that was struggling with sorcery or witchcraft, and when I asked that question, I had how many hands? Three. So is the Bible wrong? The word here for sorcery, and I want you to say this word with me, the Greek word here for sorcery is this, pharmakia. Can you say that word with me? Pharmakia. What word does that sound like in our English language? Pharmacy or pharmaceuticals. What we're doing now is we're about to look behind the scenes and the Lord is about to open our eyes in a very incredible way. What do we get from a pharmacy? Drugs. Now don't think that I'm saying that drugs are sorcery. At least your aspirins and stuff like that. But what you get from a pharmacy is drugs. The definition for this word, pharma, pharmakia, is this. Anything that medicates the mind so that it will not follow the will or the law of God. Anything, what I say? Anything. That medicates the mind so that it will not follow the will or the law of God. So what this does for us is it opens up our perspective just a little bit about what sorcery biblically is. Question. Does marijuana, ganja as it's called here, cocaine, crack, and those other kinds of drugs medicate the mind so that it is impossible for it to follow the will or the law of God? Does anyone know anyone who may be struggling with sorcery? <laughs> wow. You see, brothers and sisters, I believe that one of the things that the devil has done is he has, through the entertainment industry, put up this picture of what sorcery is. And so we think that if we see somebody walking around with a chicken's head cut off and with feathers around him, that that is sorcery and we should stay away from that. And, and indeed it is, but brothers and sisters, it goes much, much deeper. Can alcohol medicate the mind so that it will not does not want to follow the will or the law of God you know what the other word for alcohol is spirits now you know <laughs> So, brothers and sisters, let me, let me share with you that the reason why some of these things are so hard to break is because we are not dealing with natural things. We are dealing with something that is supernatural. <clears throat> Can television... Can television medicate the mind so that it will not follow the will or the law of God? Anyone know anybody out there who may be struggling with sorcery? Anything that medicates the mind so that it will not follow the will or the law of God. And I'm not talking about all television because evidently there is television here today. But brothers and sisters, this program by God's grace is directing minds to the will of God and not away from it. Can music... Medicate the mind so that it will not follow 
the will or the law of God. Brothers and sisters, we are up against sorcery. When I ask the question, how many of you would pray like you had never prayed before if you knew you were going to face a sorcerer, I think just about every hand went up. But the reason why we don't pray like that every day, the reason why we didn't pray like that this morning is because for the most part, all nations are being deceived by his sorceries. We are up against sorcery, our children are up against sorcery, and we are treating it as though it was a natural thing. And so we pray natural prayers. And this evening we're going to talk about what it means to pray supernaturally. If we were to sum up drugs and alcohol, television music, into one term or one phrase, you know what we would call it? We would call it the entertainment industry. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It is about drugs. It is about alcohol. It is about all those things that are designed to do what? Take our minds away from God and from following the will and the law of God. The word entertainment. We're going to break this word down and I want you to help me. What does enter mean? It means to come in. What does tain mean? T-A-I-N. What does that, that phrase, that, that term mean right there? It means to hold, to possess, and meant is a state of. So put the word together, it means to come in, possess, and keep in a state of possession. Is it possible? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, that we should be careful to entertain strangers because some have unwittingly thereby entertained what? Angels. So if it is possible to entertain good angels, is it also possible to entertain evil angels? The word there, the, the, the Greek word there for entertain, it means to be a host. To invite in, is it possible that through the entertainment industry, we could actually be a host for the devil and his angels? I call the entertainment industry the black hole. You know what a black hole is? It is that object in space whose gravitational pull is so strong that it is said not even light can what? Can escape from it. And brothers and sisters, many of us, and I don't want to limit this to our young people, but many of us are trapped in the black hole. Many of us are being sucked in to the black hole. We are losing young people to the black hole even as we speak. But there is good news, brothers and sisters, because there is a way of escape from the black hole. I stand here before you today as one who has escaped and has lived to tell about it. If you would turn in your Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9, our opening text read there, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his what? Angels were cast out with him. Why were these angels, why was Satan <clears throat> and these angels cast out of heaven? In Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 14, the Bible says there that Satan wanted to be what? Like God. Satan wanted to be better and bigger than God. Let me ask you this. Did Satan want to be more popular than God? Did Satan want to be more famous than God? Do you realize, brothers and sisters, that the desire to become more famous than somebody else, the desire to be worshipped, 
originated with Satan? Do you realize that that is the motivating factor for all who desire to enter into the black hole? I wanted to be famous. You know, I would remember walking out on the stage and I'd see people doing like this. What were they doing? They were worshiping. They didn't know that, but they were worshiping. These angels were cast out because they desired to be more famous than God. Jesus, when he came, the Bible says that he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he did what? Emptied or humbled himself. He didn't seek to lift himself up. He humbled himself. Now let me ask you, these stars were cast where? Down to the earth. And of course we understand that these stars are now doing the same thing. By the way, I, I mentioned these stars here because if you read in Revelation 12 verse 4, the Bible says his tail, that is Satan, drew a third part of the what? Stars of heaven. So the Bible here calls them stars. These stars were cast down to the earth and they are now doing the same thing that they were doing in heaven, heaven here on earth. They are encouraging men and women to call themselves stars. And so we've got football stars and soccer stars and movie stars and basketball stars and music stars and we are worshiping the stars, brothers and sisters. You know, our church warns against astrology, amen? We say astrology is not something good. We don't want to be reading our signs and we don't want to be directing our lives after the stars. We don't want to be stargazers. And so we preach and teach against astrology, which is a form of spiritualism, which is a form of sorcery. But brothers and sisters, could it be possible that Satan is even deceiving us? Could it be possible that as we are preaching against astrology, we are in fact involved in astrology? Could it be that we are guiding our lives according to the observance of the stars? I didn't hear anything on that one. Could it be that we are dressing according to the stars and talking according to the stars and doing all these things according to the stars? Could we in fact be stargazers? The Bible says these stars were cast out into the earth. Can someone tell me where the home of the stars is? Somebody said Hollywood. Brothers and sisters, it's not a coincidence. The city of the lost angels. Hollywood, Los Angeles. The home of the stars. The question is, which stars? Those stars that fell from heaven. Brothers and sisters, that is their capital. That is the area from which they have the most influence over the whole world. You realize that? How many of you are familiar with Harry Potter? Okay, and uh, you may not have known this, but Harry Potter carries a wand. How many of you knew that? All right. What you probably did not know is that Harry Potter's wand was made out of something called the holly tree. The holly tree. And the holly tree is one of the nine sacred trees of witchcraft. And this tree in particular also known as Holly Wood, was used 
to put people to sleep. And if you don't believe me, you can go look on the internet. You can look up, type in Harry Potter's wand and you'll find this there. Harry's wand was made out of holly. And so this holly tree with its red berries, the red berries were very attractive, but if you ate them, you could die. It looked good, but it was poisonous. The tree was used, at, in effect, to put spells of sleep upon people or to make their transition into death a little bit more comfortable. Brothers and sisters, is it any coincidence in fact, could it be that Hollywood is the magic wand of the devil? Could it be that by that wand, he is lulling people to sleep, lulling people away from a connection with God? Could it be? When... When Satan came to Adam and Eve to entertain them, to come in, possess, and keep in a state of possession. That's what I mean when I say entertain. When Satan came in to entertain Eve, did he appear to Eve and say, hey Eve, I'm the devil. What did he use? He used a medium. He used a serpent. Because he knew that if the people of God saw him for who he was, they would draw back. So he had to use a medium. And what's, what's so mind-boggling about, about this, brothers and sisters, is when you think of the plural of the word medium, it is not mediums, but it is media. Could it be that Satan is using the media today? as a medium to entertain us, to come in, possess, and keep in a state of possession. You know what the devil says? The devil says, this is what a possessed man looks like. And he shows somebody, what? Foaming from the lips, right? Looking all crazy and acting all crazy. But brothers and sisters, according to what we're seeing in the Bible, we can be, we can be sitting here in church in our suits, and be possessed. Do you realize that the, the dictionary definition of the word amuse is this to deceive by diverting the attention? That is the dictionary definition of the word amuse to deceive by diverting the attention and brothers and sisters we are being amused today by the enemy of souls God's church our young people are being amused does God condemn channeling in his word you know what channeling is? Channeling is the psychic, uh, the psychic study or ability to communicate with evil spirits through a medium. It's called channeling. And I find it striking that when we turn that box on, we start to go through the what? The channels. Could it be that the devil has a channel for us? Could it be that as we turn that box on and we begin to behold certain programs, that channeling is actually going on? Could it be that the devil is communicating his character through many of the channels that you and I are watching? You realize that Satan wants to communicate his character to us. And if you like sex, he's got a channel for you. And if you like violence, he's got a channel for you. 
and brothers and sisters as we are beholding these things and as the channel is opened up from our mind to that screen what is happening is that the devil is putting his characteristics into us and then when we come to church we are bringing those characteristics with us and then we don't get along one with another because by beholding we become changed programming you know what programming means right it means someone or something is being programmed so when we watch our programming brothers and sisters we've got to realize that one way or another some programming is going on and we are being programmed by the enemy's program what does remote control mean It means to what? Control from a distance. And brothers and sisters, the enemy has a remote control for many of us. And the scary thing is we don't see it because it's at a distance. We're saying, I don't see anything wrong with that. Nobody's controlling me. Brothers and sisters, one of the things that sin has done is it has blinded us to our ability to discern between that which is good and that which is evil. So now we're calling things that are good, evil, like good sermons. And then we're calling things that are evil, good. You know, and, and excuse me for my demonstration that, that I'm about to do, but I want to talk about hypnosis for a moment. Because you realize that hypnosis is what? When, when one mind controls another and you begin to act in ways that you are not accustomed to acting. Amen? You begin to act like something you are not. And I illustrate this all, all the time. Please bear with me as I do this now. When, when I was growing up, this is the way that I used to walk. And then, as I began to watch some of my favorite hip-hop stars... <laughs> and uh, I began to see how they began to talk you know all of a sudden it was like yo sap and uh, all of a sudden I began to act like who I had not been because brothers and sisters I was being hypnotized All of a sudden, the pants began to sag, and all of a sudden, the dress began to change. And what I did not realize, brothers and sisters, was that I, along with all my fellow peers, were being hypnotized. And it's a scary thing to me as I look in the church and I'm seeing our young brothers and young sisters. I was, I was speaking, I was at a, at, a, at a meeting the other day and there was a young lady leading out the song service and I mean she, it, whoo, she was Hawaiian <laughs> and I mean she was just singing the song service like and I was like man this, <laughs> wow, I mean she does it better than black people. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are being hypnotized and we don't even realize it. Turning your Bibles to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. Paul here is speaking and he says this. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard. It is God's purpose that we be firm in the gospel. Amen? Amen. It is the devil's purpose to do what? 
move us away from the gospel. Now when Paul here was talking about being moved away from the gospel, was he talking about being physically moved away? No, he was talking, he was saying what? Being moved in our minds. And in Colossians 3 verse 2 he says, set your affections on things where? Above. In other words, he says don't allow your emotions or your affections to be moved away from the gospel. Don't allow it. It is interesting that the word move means to stir. It means to, 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 to remove from one location to another. And it's also interesting that the word emotion has the same meaning as the word move. E and then what? Motion. It means to be moved. So when we say things like I was moved, what we're saying is that our hearts were what? Stirred. Character is made up of two things. Who can tell me what they are? Thoughts and feelings. That's according to the spirit of prophecy. Character is made up of the way that we think and the way that we feel or our emotions. The word here that Paul uses for move is nata kineo. You don't have to say that word. But I just want you to focus on the last part of that word kineo. What word does that sound like in our English language? Kinetics or kinesis. What does kinesis mean? It means to move. It means to move. Paul says, I don't want you to be what? Moved away from the gospel. Let me ask you. How many of you know why the movies are called the movies? <laughs> Amen. Could it be that these movies are doing what? Moving us away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. You realize that in one two hour movie, your emotions are literally being moved all over. You cry when the hero dies. You, you rejoice when the bad guy dies. You cry when this, you're happy, you're angry. And what's happening? Your emotions are being literally raped. And so, as this, as this continues to occur, all of a sudden now, you come to church and your emotions... Hey brother, how you doing? How many of you know what telekinesis is? Telekinesis is the psychic ability to move or deform an object without physical touch. Telekinesis is the ability to deform an object without physically touching it. Brothers and sisters, can't, could it be that the devil is using telekinesis? through the movies to destroy and deform our characters by wreaking havoc on our emotions which makes up one half of character it's amazing to realize brothers and sisters that the word cinema comes from kinesis so when we go to the cinema or the movie theater we are going there to be what? To be moved. You know, when we look at these movies and we see, give me some of those words that describe the movies. Can you give me some of the words? Hot, what else? Action, excitement, drama, you know, suspense, all these different things. And you know what? It is, it is so exciting, isn't it? It's so exciting, we just get used to, we're living here in this boring old world and we're saying, man, I want to go, I, I just want to escape, I just want to get away. And so we go to these movies and then we come back out, things are how? Things are just boring, so we've got to what? Go back again to get more and that's why the movies, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, uh, action. 
action like you've never seen before. More bombs. You've seen it before. All they're doing is giving you what? More because the human appetite for that is getting greater and greater. It's like a drug. Once you get hooked, it's never enough. You need more and more and more. And then when you come to church, and here I am trying to preach the word of God. Brethren and sisters, open your Bibles to so and so and so and so. And there's no explosions going on behind me. No, no hot, no sizzling, no nothing. What begins to happen out there? You begin to fall asleep. And what you don't realize is that that in itself is sorcery. The devil pulls out his remote control and pushes the snooze button. Brothers and sisters, if you read now, I know that you know there may be some people with, with medical conditions that whatever, but I'm telling you for the most part, you read in the spirit of prophecy, she says, when you fall asleep in church under the spoken word of God, it is sorcery. We are excited and we can stay awake for two hours watching all kinds of stuff. And if the minister preaches for over 45 minutes, <laughs> he's in trouble. <laughs> you know, brothers and sisters, one thing that the devil has done. Let me talk about video games for, for a moment. Video games which is a part of the entertainment industry. And you realize that almost all video games, we can safely say all video games, are based on the principle of aggression. Am I right? Right. Doesn't matter what it, what it is, you know, uh, uh, cars, uh, uh, violence, whatever it is, it's all based, based on the principle of aggression. And what the devil does is he says, listen, it's just a what? It's just a game, therefore, it's not really anything wrong with it. The problem with that is that Jesus enters into the fantasy world and says, even there, it is sin. If you look after a woman to lust after her, even in your imagination, in your mind, it is considered sin. In other words, God's law doesn't stop at a certain place and say, well, we're off limits here. It's just fantasy, so it's all right there. Brothers and sisters, if you are killing in the video games, you are guilty of the desire to kill. And that's why they are linking so many video games to the school shootings that are taking place across seas. In fact, the devil knows how powerful the imagination is. He knows what will happen if we give our imagination to God. That's why during the flood, you remember that the flood came because the Bible says the imaginations of men's hearts were only evil continually. Now, don't imagine they had video games, but they must have been doing something in their fantasy life. The medium has changed. But the end result is still the same. You know, Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him, who knows that text, in perfect peace, whose what? Mind is stayed on thee. But if you look in your margin, believe it or not, the word for mind is imagination. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose imagination is stayed on God. What does the devil want to do? He wants to matakaneo. What? Move us away. Move our emotions and our imaginations away from God. And he's doing a good job of it. There was a... There's a story I'd like to share about a fly 
And this fly one day was flying, and he saw a party going on in the other side of the room. There were all these flies, and they were kind of, they, they looked like they were dancing on this paper that was hanging down from the ceiling. So, you know, they were there just bouncing away, and, and the fly says, you know what, man, they're having a good time over there. They look like they're having fun. I want to go and join the party. And there was a spider on the wall that said, Mr. Fly, don't go over there. They're not having a good time. It looks like they're having fun, but Mr. Fly, those flies are trapped. And the fly says, come on. Well, what's the matter with that? Uh, get a, uh, you know what, well, you, you can't see it. I'm sure that they can leave when they want to. They're not trapped. They, you, you don't know. Oh, you're just, you're just old. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that because I don't want to pick on my young people. Because, brothers and sisters, I'm addressing everyone in here, okay? And so the fly says, you know, I'm not going to listen to you. And he goes on, and another uh, insect in tries to intervene and says, Mr. Fly, please don't go. And Mr. Fly doesn't listen. And finally, he lands at the party. And at first, he's having fun. But now, when it's time to leave, brothers and sisters, what's going on out there may look like fun. Character is made up of thoughts and feelings. Music has two components. Words and the music. Words express thoughts. The song or the music express feelings. Is it possible then that music can actually be an avenue by which our emotions and our characters can actually be changed? Brothers and sisters, music is one of the deadliest weapons that the enemy is using on God's people today. It is indeed like a drug. It's been 10 years. Sometimes I'll be walking, just you know, minding my own business, and all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, out of nowhere, some song. Whoosh. And I have to say, Lord, because the words are atrocious, and I have to say, Lord, please, give me the victory even now. You know, we like to, we like to say, you know, I'm gonna do my own thing now, and then when it's time for me to give my life to the Lord, then I'll do that. And you know, that may be fine and good, but guess what? The longer you stay in the enemy's camp is the harder your battle will be when you come out. Rap music, the origin of rap music, in New York City, when they began, there was all this gang violence going on and rap music began to become popular, people were saying, you know what, this is a good avenue because what's happening is that all these gangs can now direct their aggression into the what? Into the music and thus curb gang violence. Which lets us know something right up front. That this music, with its heavy, hypnotic, repetitive, Rhythm was an expression of what? Aggression. An expression of anger. An expression of rebellion. Just as rock music is an expression of what? Of rebellion and aggression. Just as Reggae music. is an expression. Let me say something right here. Because I learn every time I give this presentation, I talk to people and get feedback, and, and I, I learn some things about what people think. And sometimes, especially here, people have thought 
that, that I am somehow attacking my culture. Or somehow thought that, you know, this is something against black music and we should listen to white music. Brothers and sisters, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I was, you know, when I was in college, my, my code name was Africa. And that's because I was all into the, the black pride and the black this and the black, you're on black, man. Like people couldn't see that. And brother says, let me tell you, the devil got me so into this that it was all about black. Black people were the best people in the, in the whole world and black people this and black people that. Brothers and sisters, that would be just like the Jew thinking he was the best person in the whole world. It's not about black and white, it's about heaven and hell. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And brothers and sisters, the truths that I learned were so life transforming that I figured the best way I could help my black brothers and sisters is not to go tell them about black pride, but to go tell them about Jesus. And I hope none of you are offended by that because I love my black brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. I love my, my black past. I love my Jamaican past. All of that. But brothers and sisters, that I am a Christian before I'm a Jamaican. Yeah. I'm a Christian before I'm black. And so this music of aggression began to spread across the whole world and then guess what began to happen? That aggression that was in that music began to get other people what? Aggressive. It's interesting. Do you realize that the hip hop culture is not geared towards uh, family unity? How many of you realize that? The hip, all these, these different styles of music, they are geared towards towards rebellion they're geared to they're not geared you know you never hear a hip-hop song about how much uh, this guy loves his wife anybody ever heard one of those no hands you don't hear that it's about how many girls you can get how many girls this and how many and it's not geared towards family unity the music is an expression of emotions and the emotions are saying, I don't want to follow God. I want to do my own thing. I want to be rebellious. And therefore, when the words come out, you hear the same thing. They're rebellious. This hip-hop culture divides families. Do you realize that? All these musics, what they do is they divide families. In my own home, we were not a Christian family, and that hip-hop music divided my family. I mean, my parents were always saying, why are you listening to that? And we were always saying, you know what, we're just going to listen to what we're going to listen to. And it divided the family. And so it's no wonder that when we bring that into the church, we find the very same thing happening. You've got youth services because the youth can't worship with the adults all of a sudden as God's people we're to be worshiping together but now we can't even worship together it is impossible to separate the music from the culture. How many of you realize that? Music, hip-hop music, reggae music, rap, rock music is simply a reflection of the whole what? Of the whole culture. So to try to separate rock music from the rock culture is an impossibility. It can't be done. You know what happens? When we begin to bring that music into our church, guess what begins to follow? The culture. All of a sudden, the dress that was once not appropriate 
has now become appropriate. And, and the style, so now, you know, when, when, when some people preach, it's, you know, yo, you know what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, we got to give it up for Jesus. You know what I mean? Because we are now trying to reach the people who are sitting in the pews who are supposed to be Christians already. Brothers and sisters, Satan has pulled the wool over our eyes. And speaking of wool, you know the Bible talks about uh, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. And the reason why, that, why God hates that so much is because it is what? Dishonest. Let a wolf be a what? Wolf and let a sheep be a what? Sheep. So that nobody's confused. If I want to go get eaten, I go to the wolf. If I want to go get a friend, I go to the sheep. And we talk about wolves in sheep's clothing, but have you ever considered sheep in wolves clothing? Is it possible that we may be, in essence, trying to say, well, you know what, I'm a sheep, but I'm going to dress, act, and look, and sing like a wolf. So that I could reach people. No, brothers and sisters, God says, let the wolves be the wolves and let the sheep be the sheep. There should be a clear line because both are using principles of deception. When the world looks at you, they expect to be able to identify you as a Christian. And the lines are being blurred brothers and sisters the Bible says by your what fruit you shall know them and when we look at the fruit of gospel rock and gospel hip-hop and gospel reggae we, we see one thing in particular we see one that while it may be bringing some young people into the church it is dividing the younger and the older people from one another the fruit is that this thing is causing more division than it is unity. Brothers and sisters, the last prophecy of the book of Malachi, the Old Testament says uh, that uh, Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, will come and will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. But what this is doing is it is turning the hearts of the fathers from the children and the hearts of the children from their fathers. How many of you believe that what I've just said is true? How many of you see it? Come on, young people, older people. We see it, don't we? It's obvious. All we need to do is look at the fruit. We say, well, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't. Well, what's the matter with? Look at the fruit. There is a plot by the enemy of souls. And this plot is aimed particularly at our future pastors. Let me explain. Because you see what's happening is that as this music is overtaking our churches and we're saying it's good for the young people, what we're finding strangely is that more and more of our young people are less and less biblically literate. Forty years ago, and I'm not forty, this is before my time, but brothers and sisters, forty and fifty and sixty years ago, our youth knew their Bibles backwards and forwards. They could get up and preach to you a sermon straight out of the book of Revelation. They could tell you about 1844. They could tell you about the sanctuary and the various compartments. They could tell you about the beast. They could tell you about why we do what we do. And today, as we, are, we find this strange... As this music is entering into our churches and young people are feeling less and less inclined to study the Word of God because if I feel good, it must be holy. If I'm crying, it must be righteous. If I'm singing with all my heart, I must be on God's side, I must be, and, 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 and they are using this to replace the study of the Word of God. And so what Satan is doing, this is his plan. He plans to wipe out all the pastors, all the
the young men who, who, who God said, I want you to, to, to study your word. I want you. What he's doing is if he can eliminate the desire to study the word of God, brothers and sisters, in one generation, we will have a church that we will not recognize. It'll all be about singing and, you know, let's, you know, Jesus loves you. Praise the Lord. No more substance. And I'm telling you, it's a scary thing. Because, brothers and sisters, I'm young. And as I look at my young peers who are preparing for the ministry, I'm scared. I also find that the fruit is hate. Because, brothers and sisters, the Bible says, if any man hate his brother, he is not of who? He's not of God. Paul lays out a principle. You all know this. Paul says, if me cause my brother to stumble or be offended, I will what? I will eat no flesh all the days of my life. Paul was laying out the gospel principle there. He said, listen, though you may have liberty, if it's offensive to somebody else, the Christian thing to do is to not do it. Some people say, well, you know, I can drink a little wine and it doesn't hurt me. That may be true. But if you know that by your influence, there are others who see it and say, I'm going to drink wine, and they're going to go out there and kill somebody's son or daughter, you say, you know what, it may be all right, but I will not what? Do it. And brothers and sisters, it's not all right. Because we know that Jesus drank unfermented wine, not fermented. There's a difference between the wine of God and the wine of Babylon, you understand? And so, what we find happening... is that as this music is coming in, there are more and more people who are saying, I don't care what you think. I don't care how you feel. You can sit there and don't clap all you want. You can be offended all you want. We're taking over. And brothers and sisters, that is the spirit of hate. That is a spirit of disrespect. And Paul says, you can be preaching. You, Jesus said, you can say, uh, 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 Lord, Lord. And he would say, depart from me, I never what? Knew you. How many of you would be willing to give something up if you knew that it was offensive to somebody else? Let me see your hands. Let's be honest now. Let's be honest now. Let me see your hands. All right? That's good. Some hands didn't go up. Good. We're being honest. Brothers and sisters, for some of us, it's more about what we want than what is best for the body of Jesus Christ. If you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, and we'll be coming to a close at some point in the future. <laughs> Acts chapter 16. I hear people mention a lot things like this. What if, and you know what, I know there's a ton of questions we can ask. Isn't, isn't that right? There are thousands, and we can talk ourselves out of anything. Amen? There are thousands of questions we can ask. Brothers and sisters, what I want to encourage you to do this morning is to go home and study this for yourself. You know, I don't have all the answers. I know what God has shared with me. But if you're going to be convicted, you're going to have to be convicted either because you believe God's word or you went home and you studied for yourself. But don't go off of what I feel and what I think. <clears throat> so many of us go, well, you know, I don't see. Doesn't the Bible say that we need to have our eyes anointed so that we can see? I don't see anything wrong. Well, it's because our eyes aren't anointed. People say to me all the time, what if the words are good? to this form of music. What if the words are all right? Let me share with you a story here in Acts chapter 16 where Paul is confronted with a woman that has an evil spirit. How many of you remember this story? 
Acts 16, the Bible says, Acts 16, verse 16, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain woman, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit, saying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are Christians, therefore stay away from them. These men are what? The servants of the Most High God, which do what? Show us the way unto salvation. Do you believe what you just read? Here is an evil spirit that is speaking what kind of words? Good words. True words. Now, how many of you think Paul is going to be happy with this? You know, hey, she's a, she's a witch, she's a sorcerer, but she's speaking what? Good words. Well, the combination then is good. How do you think Paul's going to be happy with that? Watch what happens. And this she did for many days, but Paul being what? Grieved. Grieved. Paul being what? Grieved. grieved. Paul being what? Grieved. grieved. Brothers and sisters, we should be grieved when we see a mixture of the holy and the profane. Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. You want to know why Paul did that? Because Paul understood that what she was doing was mocking the gospel message. Here you have a sorcerer who's involved in the culture of sorcery and looks like a sorcerer and dresses like a sorcerer and she's speaking good words. People would look and say, oh, hey, it's all, look at that sorcerer. I mean, she's good. She's doing it, so what's the matter with that? And you know what we say? We say, look at our favorite gospel, or, uh, you know, our rap Christian artists. They're doing it. So it must be okay. They're doing it in the regular field, so it must be okay. Brothers and sisters, is it okay? Brothers and sisters, it is a mockery to God when we stand there in our pride. And I'm speaking of me myself now with my dreadlocks and my stance like this saying, I'm doing this for Jesus. It was all about pride. You ever seen a humble rap artist? Brothers and sisters, in these fields, it is impossible to be humble on stage. Do you realize that? It is impossible to, you know, you don't get a dance and say, you know, I just want to say a little rhyme about Jesus. You'd get laughed at, wouldn't you? You've got to be like, yeah. Brothers and sisters, it is absolutely impossible to be humble on stage. To be humble. You can't walk around humble. You've got to walk with the, with the walk. You've got to talk with the talk. It is impossible that the two do not go together. For every genuine, there are two counterfeits. What did I say? For every genuine, there are what? Two counterfeits. One for the world, and then one for the, for the church. The devil knows that the church will not go for the counterfeits of the world, but if he can do this trick, and let me tell you about this little trick. You're going you're, you're to appreciate this little trick here. The devil has a trick. It's a nine-letter word. And he can put this word in front of anything and trick a Christian. Who knows what the nine-letter word is? The word is Christian. Christian. All he has to do is put the word Christian before anything, and all of a sudden, Christians are deceived. He did it with sun worship. The pagans worship the sun, but then he said, I can't deceive the Christians like that, so I need to Christianize it. And he replaces the seventh day of the week as a day of worship with the first day of the week as a day of worship. 
He did it with tongues. There are sorcerers and witches out there who babble. And he says, well, Christians are going to look at that and say, man, that's really weird and spooky. But if I can put the word Christian before it and make it seem like a good thing. And so we be, the, the church begins to speak in this so-called tongues that is a counterfeit of the real biblical tongues. Anybody ever heard of Christian boxing? You know the one where you get in the ring and you pray to the Lord to help you knock out your opponent? Brothers and sisters, how many of you have seen that? How many of you have seen that before? Yeah. I'm not playing when I say this stuff. And so if you can just put the word Christian before it, and now you got Christian rock, and Christian reggae, and Christian hip-hop. If you go on the internet, you will find Christian sorcerers. You don't believe me. How many of you believe me? You type in Christian witchcraft and you will find that there are witches who say we are Christian witches. All he needs to do is put the word Christian before it and all of a sudden we are deceived. All of a sudden we are trapped. I want to read something to you and then we're really getting ready to close. You know, there have been scientific studies done on music alone. How many of you are aware of some of these studies? They have done scientific studies where they have taken certain styles of music and compared it to other styles of music and then no music, and they'll take rats or mice. And they'll put these, these rats into different cages with different styles of music. And in this particular one, they used, um, they used rock music. And they would put these mice in this cage, in this, in this maze, and they would just uh, have this rock music playing at the same decibel as they had other various styles of music playing, just instrumentals, all instrumentals. And they found that the cage with the, with the rock music going on, that that cage, after a few days, the mice could not find their way out of the maze and ended up attacking and killing each other. Whereas the mice in the other cage found their ways through the maze. Brothers and sisters, if you think that music does not have an effect on our characters, all you need to do is research it scientifically. Listen to this profound, profound statement. This is from the book Maranatha, page 234. Incredible statement. The things you have described, the Lord has shown me would take place just before the close of probation. Every uncouth thing will be demonstrated. There will be shouting with drums, music, and the senses of rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And all this will be called the moving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such methods, in such a bedlam of noise. This is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenious methods of making of non-effect the pure, sincere, elevating, ennobling, sanctifying truth for this time. A bedlam of noise shocks the senses and perverts that which, if conducted aright, might be a blessing. The powers of satanic agencies blend with the din and noise to have a carnival, and this is termed the Holy Spirit's working. Brothers and sisters, this was written over a hundred years ago. And as we look at many of the churches today, I'm talking about all across the denominations. You look at the churches today and you know what you see? It's no longer about the word of God. It's about how much can we get our groove on. Yes. 
Brothers and sisters, we are, we are warring against supernatural power. How many of you see that now? We are warring against supernatural. There is a reason why you are addicted. It's because you are dealing with something that is supernatural. And brothers and sisters, unless we have the supernatural power of God, we're going to talk about that this evening. Unless we have the supernatural power of God, we will be deceived by sorcery. I want to make an appeal to you right now. When the Ephesians became Christians, the Bible says that they burned the magic books. It was books at that time. Some of you have said when you came in here this morning, I asked you about sorcery, you said, oh, this message is not for me because I don't know anyone that is struggling with sorcery and I'm not struggling with sorcery. I'm a good Christian. Now you realize, brothers and sisters, that you have magic books in your home. You know what I mean when I say magic books. You've got videos, you've got DVDs, you've got music, you've got things you've been watching on TV that you know, now know, that it is the power of sorcery. You're wondering why you can't have clean thoughts. You're wondering why you can't seem to be on fire. You know, the Bible says that we should be hot. Amen? Do you realize that uh, God says that he would rather us be hot or cold but not lukewarm? How do you get lukewarm? By mixing what? Hot and cold? Do you realize that it is impossible to be hot and cool at the same time? And you notice I use the word cool? It is impossible to be on fire for God and try to be cool like the world at the same time. Brothers and sisters, God is calling you right now. He's speaking to you right now. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, I want you to stand up to come down to the front for this appeal. You've got things in your home that I have been asking you to get rid of for a long time. And today's the day for you to make your decision. Young people, let me do this. I want to start with all the people under 25 right now. 25. I'm, I'm speaking to no one above that. All of the people under 25 who have said, Lord, I heard your voice today. I've got things. I'm stargazing. I'm, I'm involved in astrology. I'm watching the stars. My life is being formed by the stars. I am mixing the holy with the profane. I need your power to burn the magic books. Would you come? If you're up the top, please. We'll wait. Please come. Come on. Brothers, let me tell you something. As you're coming, in the book of Daniel 12 and verse 4, the Bible says that God's stars will shine as the brightness of the firmament. There are two stars, brothers and sisters. There is a star wars going on. There are the stars of Hollywood and there are the stars of God. And the stars of God are directing the attention of the people to Jesus Christ, the morning star. And the stars of Hollywood are directing people to worship them. And there is a star war going on and God is calling for young stars who will stand up and go against the tide that is sweeping the churches and say, I will not go along with this. I will stand firm and I will stand strong. Brothers and sisters, there are too few young voices who are standing for anything today. There are too few young people who know their Bibles anymore. And all of God's angels are rejoicing right now as he's seeing you young people, you stars, saying, that's it, no more the world, no more sheep in wolves' clothing or wolves in sheep's clothing. I'm going to be a sheep. I'm going to be a shining light. I'm going to be a shining star for Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, you all know that this kind of message is best coming from a young person. You all know that. 
Somebody older could, could be up here preach the same thing, and you'll say, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about because... <laughs> Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I want you all to keep each other accountable. Have a bonfire. Go home, plan the day, and say we're going to bring all of our stuff and we're going to burn it. And we are going to make a commitment to God to stand firm for Him. Now, if there are more of you that need to come, please. In fact, I shouldn't have even done that. There is a young man right now who is still seated in his seat. Who is still sitting who is wrestling and trembling right now and I'm gonna call you brother it may be two or three of you but the Spirit of God is speaking to you do not remain seated don't listen to the devil's lie because he's telling you you don't have to give it up now give it up later don't listen I'm asking you to stand and come please please my brother please my sister come I know the devil is speaking, but God is speaking right now as well. Please listen to his voice. Now I want to call for those of you 25 and above. And I don't care who you are or what position you have or your respectability in society. You are trapped in the black hole. And you have seen its effect in your life. And you're saying today, Lord, I'm going to burn the magic books. I'm going to stop allowing my mind to be diverted from, from the truth of your word. And I'm going to get into my Bible like I have never done before. And I am going to become a mighty weapon for you, Jesus Christ. Please, brother, sister, come. Do not let the devil stop you. From standing there is war invisible war going on in this room right now angels are speaking both good and evil angels are wooing angels are saying my son my daughter my, my brother my sister come forward look what Jesus has done for you don't let his sacrifice be in vain Brothers and sisters, do you know how many churches need to hear this message? I am one person. God is not looking for a superstar. And I am not a superstar. And it is not my mission or purpose to travel around the globe being the sole voice. God is looking for other people. He is no respecter of persons. He's looking for other people to get up and with conviction. And finally, for those of you who are seated, who have gotten victory over the black hole, praise the Lord for you. And those of you who are seated, who have not gotten victory over the black hole, who are wrestling, struggling, you may even be angry with me for what I've said this morning. I know that you're not angry with me. I know that you love me. I know that you're angry with the message. But brother, sister, I love you. And God loves you. And even though you may not understand now, God will open us. He will bring the understanding if you seek it with all your heart. Heavenly Father, Lord, your angels have been victorious this morning. Father, our eyes have been opened to the tremendous battle that is before us. Father, we need to know you like we have never known you before. Lord, we need to reach out to you like we have never done before. For Father, we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Father, it is not enough to just preach the truths about this church. People are coming into this church left and right and they are still stuck in the black hole. Father, we have missed the boat. Please, Lord, show us what we must do in order to deliver others from the bondage of this world. 
And Father, right now I pray that you would pour out the spirit that was at this pulpit this morning, that you would pour it out on each and every person who you have called to go forth with this message. Father, give them a double portion of truth, of power, of glory. And Lord, may they be used in a mighty way to reveal the deceptions of the enemy and to uplift the glory.